This is Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, and you're listening to Metal on KLQ with Greg Giles. Now, with the new uh, lineup secured in the album Endgame released, which everyone needs to go check that out, obviously. You know, as far as promotion goes, and I know you don't want to go too far into this with the record label and crap, but, are, are, you know, it's are they supporting you? Are the record sales going all right in your mind? Uh, did Roadrunner give you artistic freedom to do the new album? Are they promoting it? Well, I don't really know um, ha- how to say this other than just try and be as positive as possible um, for myself, because... I've done my part. I, I made the best record I could. Uh, the record is critically acclaimed everywhere. Even uh, some of my main detractors, like Blabbermouth, have given it an 8.5 out of 10, uh, to which, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the review, and, and uh, I also am, am uh, grateful for the, the times when they do have stuff nice to say about me. Uh, I appreciate it, um, and I look forward to uh, having many of their fans discover Megadeth music, and and uh, being able to provide you know, good, intelligent uh, news stuff for them that's going on within our world, because we've got a lot of great things happening with us. Um, sadly, uh, they're one of the sites that also you know, contribute a lot to uh, vilifying me. And, and uh, um, like I said, uh, it doesn't really bother me so much, uh, but it disappoints me that these, these guys, that these young droogs, are possibly going to miss out on seeing me before I don't play anymore. You know, I missed out on seeing Led Zeppelin, and I'm, i got to tell you, 48 years old, I missed it when I was in my teens, and, and if, if I could talk to the Dave that was a teenager, one of the things I would say is, um, don't drink so much. <laughs> the, the other thing would yeah. be, um, don't miss the Zeppelin concert when it comes. Someone's going to tell you, don't go, because Jimmy's playing bad, and you're going to believe it. <laughs> but don't listen Oh, you know Lord. what? I, I didn't go to that concert, and I could kick myself. I went and saw them two years ago at the at the O2, but uh, it wasn't the same. Right. And I just I just want to be able to to let people that you know are are critics or something have a fair shot at, at evaluating what I do. And if at that point you know you don't think that I'm good at what I do, hey, go ahead. But there's times where it gets a little uh, unfortunate the things that said because my daughter's reading it now, and and I don't think any of these guys whether they're really really mad at me or they don't really know why they're mad at me. I think that if you probably sat down with a bunch of them and you said, hey, you know what, buddy, um, I don't know if you know this. It's, it's, it's fun to kind of throw barbs at me and stuff like that because I can give them back, but you're hurting my daughter, and, and I don't think you're the kind of man or the kind of young man or the kind of girl, or if it's a woman that would really want to hurt a, an innocent 11-year-old girl. You know, that, that crap just is, it doesn't seem like that's the spirit of heavy metal, you know. But there's people out there that do that, and, and um, you know, I just try my best not to, to focus on it and to give them the benefit of the doubt and to, you know, hopefully meet them at some point and, and welcome them into the fold. Do you think at this at this point, she's 11 years old, do you think maybe she sometimes looks at what you have said or what is written about you and says, oh, Dad, why did you say that, or... Absolutely, she said that stuff. Um, on the last record, I had a line in one of the songs where I said I had my balls to the walls, and she goes, Ooh, Dad! <laughs> so I took the line out. <laughs> oh, you did it for her. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I love her, and, you know, I'm really, uh, at the end of the day, the, see, the, this is one of the bummers, too, about all the stuff that's said about me, is most of it's not true. I mean, some of the stuff is, is not true, and it says really nice things about me. So, you know, I've got to also say those things aren't true when, when I um, say, hey, these things that aren't true about me that are, are bad. You know, I've got, I got to say the same thing. The things that make me look great, if it's not true, it's just as much a lie as the things that make me look bad. And, and there's a lot of stuff that's said about me that I, I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's a crazy story. I wish I really did that, you know, like um, holding back single-handedly a, a stampede of charging rhinos, you know. Yeah, Jimmy um, Page did it, right? <laughs> you wish you would have done it. Yeah, well, stuff like this, you know, there, there were stuff that, um, you know, they've got this crazy thing on our webpage, too, about... Uh, um, Dave Mustaine is so metal that, and then they've got all these really funny, clever sayings, and and I I love that. I love having this kind of relationship with our fans and our followings that they can joke around. I can be this public figure that has uh, you know thick skin that can take a punch, that can that can handle a punchline, that can you know give a good zinger back, that has music that's poignant. Some of it's fun, some of it's serious, some of it's fast, some of it's slow. You know, and and the point is, is man, I don't judge people anymore. I went through a period where 
it was hard to be me because we were fighting for heavy metal. We, we were the ones that were out there every day fighting for metal. And we were the ones who were kicking the doors and starving on the road, doing whatever we could, drinking whatever we could get our hands on just to get through the day so that we could find another place to break down a barrier for heavy metal. And it wasn't the same as it is today. You know, back then, heavy metal people looked like they were satanic. They all looked like greasy bikers, and, and they thought we were all um, stupid and, and on drugs. So and now we have a place in society where you can have anybody, any walk of life, listening to metal because it's a respectable music style. And you've got a lot of people that write lyrics that are, are intelligent. Granted, there's a bunch of people that are taking advantage of uh, metal fans' money and, and just writing stuff that's got a great me melody to it, but the lyrics are kind of dumb. And, and there's other people that, you know, don't have, they, they don't write a note of their own music. But for me, I'm old school. I'm old style. I write my own stuff. I take the, the good with the bad. You know, I've taken the, the compliments with the insults. And, and I love my job. I wouldn't change it for the world. That's excellent. You you ever consider taking the Rob Halford approach and just creating your own entertainment company because they're just too much red tape with capital and all that? Well, capital isn't the enemy. Um, they're, they're, you know, the music industry itself is continuing to turn itself inside out. And, and looking back, capital was one of our best allies. There was a lot of changes with the presidents that were running the place because, you know, capital's primary strength was through EMI selling catalog. But uh, our time in cap capital was the most enjoyable of any of our period. The Prior to Capital was combat. It wasn't enjoyable. You got a president that said that he wrestled me and that uh, he said he was going to kneecap me. Well, I remember the comment about kneecapping me, but it wasn't said by him because I don't forget threats. And second off, if he would have wrestled me, I would have remembered that too because I would have hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wrestle anybody without um, somebody getting hurt, either myself or them. That's just the way of the, of the street. And yeah. then um, the labels after Capital, that was Sanctuary, which was a disaster, and the labels uh, completely dissolved now. And that record that we put out on them is uh, somewhere is, is sitting in a box in a warehouse in somewhere in Manhattan. And uh, after that was Roadrunner, and, and I promised I wasn't going to say anything negative about him anymore. So I, I'm just going to say that I did my job. I made the best record I could, and, and um, it's out of my hands now. You know, now, now that you mentioned that about your daughter, it kind of made me think a little bit about the last couple of questions I was going to ask you, which were drug-related, so I think I'm going to just hold off on those. It was really just going to be, you know, when's the last time you used them recreational and all that kind of stuff. I, I think don't use them recreationally. I, I, I take medication whenever I need it. Um, I don't take drugs recreationally. I don't use heroin or cocaine anymore, which were, you know, the drugs that I liked. And, and uh, as far as drinking, um, I drink wine. Um, I, I don't really like to drink beer because it's fattening, and, I, and I'm trying to do the P90X workout really hard, so um, <laughs> I don't want to do that. That thing is brutal, and I don't want to do that and then ruin it by having a beer. And hard liquor, I hate. I had a couple of shots uh, like a week ago um, in Japan with Akira Takahashi from Loudness because I just met him, and Sean was a huge fan of his, and <laughs> so I thought I would be kind to him, and he was hanging out, and he gave me a shot, and I said, I don't drink this. And he goes, oh, come on, and I said, okay, one shot. So I took a shot because I just wanted to be a good host. And, and then um, it gave me one more, and the rest of them I was pouring in between the, the sofa and the, and the chair on the floor because I just couldn't drink anymore. And I was so sick the next morning. I missed my train to Osaka, and it was just from a couple of shots of whiskey. I was so sick, I thought I was going to die. And you know what? God's completely removed that obsession from me um, from, from being alcoholic. I used to drink cognac every day, no problem, every day. It was all vodka before that when I was in Talaga. And now <clears throat> I have like a glass and a half of wine, and I start to get sick to my stomach. So it's a great thing because I can kind of feel it with the first glass, and I also get the benefits of the, the hypnols in, the, in it, the, the red part of the wine. Antioxidants. Yeah, and, um, you know, I don't, I don't drink to get drunk anymore. I go out on stage, I'm done. When I'm at home, I, I don't drink. So I've been pretty much spared from the scrap heap. Well, that's cool. So you you, you your consider question? yourself a, a, you know, a lot of people call you a Bible banger, a holy roller, all that kind of crap. But you're a pretty Me? spiritual guy, though, huh? Me? A Bible banger? The same guys that are on the uh, blabbermouth that it would say things like that, you know. Well, I, I think that that's not true at all, because I haven't said anything to you scripturally at all. I, I'm a guy that's trying to live his life differently, you know. Um, I... <sighs> And I was destined to die that other way, and I don't believe that any of those guys, as, as uh, confused as they are, or, or as, as mean as they want to be, I don't think anybody would wish somebody else to just die.